Well, let's do that. So what do we know about the relation to the left? Uh, so, y'all can't see that. When people are saying graph, right, what do they mean as a graph? Is that the type of relation? It's a mathematical something. Remember, a graph is a type of another R word, representation. So don't forget to keep relations versus representation straight. So when we say representations, that's a graph. Now, representations. So could you still say graph there? Yeah. Is that true about that relation, that it's a graphical representation? 100%, right? So we're good to go there. It is a function, right? Let's look at that. Um, we've got a couple of other things. So we've got a lot of this that said gra uh, graph or function. So looking at this graph, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So when I look at this graph right here, is it a function? Yes? How do we know? So remember the line test is a, not because I saw someone make the note straight line test. Technically all lines are straight, right? Uh, all lines have that constant additive rate of change that we'll go into more later, but it's a vertical line test. Right? Because literally that line is what direction? Vertical. And so notice what that's saying is uh, this x value is negative 2. And so if my input is negative 2, uh, that's not a good one to look at. Let's look at this one. If my input is 0, can anyone tell what my output is? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? If I have an input of 0, do I get any other outputs? No. Okay, so then let's look. Uh, let's look here. Here, here's the point. So if I have an input of three, what's my output? Three. 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 Negative. Negative. Three. 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 X output is y. y. Okay, so notice that vertical line is let me visually see really quickly every input is mapping to not just one output, to one and only one output. Notice I'm going back to that definition. We've got to understand those definitions. Uh, someone made the comment that it's a linear function. Do you all agree? Why is it linear? Okay, yeah, like we don't have to make it complicated. It's linear. It's called linear because the shape of that graph is a line. Cool. We go with that at detail? Yeah. Does anyone remember anything else about linear functions, though? No. Nothing else? You know you studied linear in 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade. All we know is that it's linear and that's it? Okay, so we got some stuff to learn. Anybody remember anything about linear beyond? I remember linear, but I know what's the way. Alright. Oh, what's the equation? Y plus B. Oh, y equals mx plus b. What did you just say? Rise over oh, run. Eh, what do I like to say instead? Here, what it actually is divided by run. Remember, over is just a positional thing. There's no mathematics involved in that. But rise divided by run is very useful. What is rise divided by run? X plus y divided by h. Okay, so it is y. So you'll hear me oftentimes say change in y divided by the change in x. So have I talked about this symbol in this class? Okay. So in math and in science, this is the Greek letter delta. It's not a triangle, it's the Greek letter delta. And if you see the Greek letter delta, it just means change. So like if I'm talking about what's rising, first off, is that x or y direction? That's y, and that's how much the y is changing. Right? Rise is the change in y. Uh, run, what direction is this? X, and that's the, so that is the change in x. Right? So they're very connected, but does anyone remember what that is? Or do we need to explore that some more heavily? What is? See, it's not coordinates though, because it's not x and y, it's the change in y, and it's the change in x. So it's how much they're changing. For instance, how much is my y changing here? Not just by 2, minus 2, right? 
How much is my x changing? So there's my change in y, my change in x. Notice that's not the coordinates. The coordinates would be 0, 4, and 3, 2, right? So it's the change in x, change in y. Uh, does anyone remember what we're calculating when we say rise divided by rondo? What are we calculating there? Oh, that's the slope, right? We've got to connect all those things, okay? So there's a lot going on here. Um, okay. So I'm going to hold on to that for a second. I think that's about all that we remember, is what it sounded like with lines, yeah. linear functions. So we're going to build on that today. Um, let me ask you this. Does anyone remember anything about exponential functions? Or what do you remember about exponential functions? It can go up. What? I mean, literally, think about that name. I like what J. Mike's saying, right? If it's an exponential function, it's going to result, revolve around what? Exponents. Why is it called exponential? Because it involves exponents. exponents. That makes sense, doesn't it? The question is going to be how and why. So hold on to those ideas because we're going to come back to those soon. The last thing that I want to talk about as part of this review is this. So how, what's an equivalent representation for x plus 4y plus 3x minus 7y? Okay? Um, so, got lots of responses on this. The most common I'm seeing is a 4x plus an 11y or some variant of that. Okay. I see a 7x and a minus 7. Um, okay, so let's talk about that 4x plus 11y. Where, can someone explain where they're getting 4x from? So I did 3 in the x plus x, and I got 4x. So you did 3x plus x, and you got what? 4x. 4x, okay, cool. Why is x plus 3x 4x? Because like x is just 1. It feels like another 1, then you did 3x plus x plus x. You just add them together? Yes. Wait, we add exponents? Variable. But we're not adding the variables. What are we? Light terms, they, light terms. they are like terms, but what are we actually adding? What is the three in this expression? It's the coefficient. But so let me uh, not imaginary. It's just understood, right? But hold on a second. I, I need to understand. I need to. Add, I need to ask this of y'all. Have we ever had anyone explain to us why we can do 1x plus 3x is 4x? Like where that's coming from? No, just always accepted it? Okay, let's go back to something then really quickly. I need us to pay attention to this because it's going to really impact our understanding of linear and exponential functions very heavily. Right here, what's happening between the 3 and the x? Oh, they're being multiplied? I know we talked about this yesterday. What is multiplication? So what does this really mean here? What does this actually mean? Uh, 3 times x plus x. What am I repeatedly doing? Adding 3x's. So it's not as much about the 3 as it is about the number of x's here. So how many x's do I have total? So why is x plus 3x 4x? Well, it's because literally I am repeat. I have how many x's? One, and I am adding how many x's? Three. So now I want y'all to think about this 4y minus 7y again. You sure that's 11y? No, sir. Why Because, like, what, yeah, what does this 4y actually mean? It means I am adding how many y's? Four. Four. And then what's happening to those four y's? I'm subtracting, I'm subtracting, and I like that language, I'm subtracting seven y's. Now, will I always write this out, guys? Heck no. But does this illustrate why this is happening? 100%. This is supposed to explain where this is coming from. Notice what's y minus y? Zero y. Well, zero. Zero. Anything minus itself is zero, isn't it? Yes, sir. Y minus Y? Zero. Zero. And so I've got negative three. So I've got, I'm taking away Y three times still. So it's, uh, it's uh, four X. So it's four X minus three Y. Oh, I got that right. 
I didn't know. Okay. I was close. Man. I didn't know so, I didn't know. So, hey, guys, listen. I, I need y'all to hear me. The goal right now is not to get it right or to get it wrong. It's to understand why. Right. If we understand why, then what we study in a minute is going to make way, way, way more sense, okay? So, please understand, whenever you see multiplication, you should think repeated addition. If you see repeated addition, you should think multiplication. That's going to impact things later because, by the way, J. Mike, you mentioned uh, exponentials revolve all around what? Okay, so if multiplication is repeated addition, what's an exponent? Repeated addition. Repeat multiplication. Say again. Repeat multiplication. Oh, an exponent has something to do with repeated multiplication. Hold on to these ideas because they're going to impact what we do in a minute. Um, so. Multiplication is repeated addition, but an exponent is repeated multiplication. multiplication. Okay, so here's what we're about to do. Today is all about linear versus exponential functions. We're going to start with the dream job salary task to really drive home and illustrate what these types of functions are, and then we're going to get a good bit of practice in. We need to get all the way through linear versus exponential between today and tomorrow because on Friday I have a friend of mine from uh, the University of West Alabama, Dr. Johnson. He's going to come in and he's going to help us see physically how do these functions actually operate in the real world. And so this is actually where we're going to introduce quadratics as well. So if we can start quadratics before he comes, that's going to be really helpful. But we got to make sure we understand linear and exponential before he gets here. All right? Um, and then he's going to use that for introduction. Uh, so remember yesterday, one of the things, and very quickly we got away from this in my first walk and had to bring them back. Yesterday, the whole point was we can create multiple mathematical representations to find answers, right? And those representations help us see things. When I see a graph of a line, what do I immediately know about that function? It's linear, right? But a table is a great way to see patterns and relationships. So think about your different representations as we work today. And yes, we want to get to uh, the algebra eventually, because we're in algebra too, but that's not the only thing. Uh, really quickly, I do want to point out with your proficiency scales, have we talked about relations, functions, and mathematical representations? Yeah. If you feel confident that you understand those things, you should be able to check those off at this point. right? If you're not confident in a relation versus a function, for, and mathematical representation, then don't mark that off yet, but that tells you that you need to study those ideas. Right? Or record every day so you can go find those things. Uh, identify the type of mathematical representation. Can we identify graphs, tables, etc. hopefully? Okay. If you can't because you're not familiar with that language, make sure you study that. Uh, determining if a relation is a function. We've done that in class as well, right? By the way, that's all from algebra one as well. Um, now we are moving into, and this is what Preston was asking about, have we, uh, can I give an example of a quadratic? We're going to move into that on Friday. Before that, we need to understand linear and exponential really, really, really well. And then today we're going to get into this idea of equivalence. So we're not there yet, but that's what we're going to talk about today pretty early on. So linear, exponential, equivalent, later is quadratics. And then be aware there's also this entire section devoted just to linear and exponential. So we're going to come back to that. All right, but this is what I need to work on to understand linear versus exponential. It's time for your dream job. And I don't care what the job actually is. That, that's not what's important. What's the most important part of get, having a job? Money. Money. Yeah, I disagree with that, but I know most of us are going to say that the money is what matters, right? Absolutely. That's all some of us care about. So let's say this. you got a new job coming up, and your boss is pretty unusual. He gives you two different options to make money, the, the scheme. So you're going to have a 30-day contract. And in this 30-day contract, option one says, hey, you're going to get a $300,000 signing bonus. <laughs> I'm in, right? $300,000 signing bonus and $60,000 a day. All right? So that's option one. By the way, for you to get that $300,000 signing bonus, how many days do you have to work? You got to sign, right? It's a signing bonus. So how many days you got to work? No. Zero days, right? Like you, you signed that dotted line, you've worked zero days, you're still making how much money? $300,000. $300,000. I'm in, right? 
Option two. Option two. You're going to get a one cent, one penny signing bonus. All right. Okay? Day two. Okay? Or day one, sorry. You're going to get one more penny. So how much do you have at the end of day one? Two cents. Two cents. Total two cents. So every day. Day two. You're going to get two more cents. So you have how much now? Four cents. Okay, okay. Day three, you're going to get four more cents. So you're going to have how much now? Eight cents. Okay. Um, so what's that mean for day four? You're going to, well, you're going to get eight more cents for a total of 16 cents. Okay. So the question for you is, which of these options are you going to take to make the most money? And here's the requirement. You have to come up with an answer and you have to justify it with two different mathematical representations. So I don't want to guess, I don't want an answer, I want you to justify it with two different mathematical representations. What are your questions at this point? Okay, so you have to have two mathematical representations. I promise you, you'll learn a lot of math if you trust me in all these rules. Let's get up, let's keep going. <laughs> Oh. I'll use some multiplication to help you jump multiple days with option one. So what's option two? What's happening in option two? What's from two? Two what? Two going up. Not going up. Multiplying by two. Hey guys, how did I show repeated multiplication? Repeated multiplication. Say it again, Maddie. Guys, stop talking and listen. Repeated multiplication is shown through what? Exponents. And J. Mike, remind me, you said exponentials are all about what? Oh, repeated multiplication. No, no, no. Earlier you said it's all about oh, exponents. Oh, those exponentials are all about exponents. We come back from lunch. We need to look at this from that lens. How can we speed things up? Now, first things first. Wow, that's a whole lot of not center of the room. Oh my God. Center of the room. Because I'm about to move around the outside of the room and I need you in the center so that you can easily turn to see where I'm looking. Now, first things first, I need y'all to hear me on this. The point of this task was not to just find an answer. It was not to just do option one versus option two. That was not the point of this. The point was to help us learn about what type of functions. Exponential and linear. linear. Anyone figure out which one is exponential? Option two. Why is option two exponential? We keep multiplying, and repeated multiplication is shown through an exponent. Oh my goodness. And so option one is what? It's linear. So what's there in that linear that makes it linear? It's repeated what? Addition. Okay, so I need us to look over here. So I want to talk about these equations that this group came up with. First off, uh, I don't remember who it was, but someone was over here talking about, I think, uh, Kaden, what did you say you were going to take originally? Which option? The first option. The first option. What was your reasoning? Um, yeah, that wasn't what you said before. What did you actually say? I don't remember. You had 60,000. Oh, a day. A day. 60,000 day. I think you even said, did you say 60,000 bones or something like that? No, racks, racks, that's what you said, that's it, that's it, racks, he said 60,000 racks today, my bad, but uh, let's look at this group right here, day 30 with option 1 shows, I don't know, 2,100,000, man, I tell you what, I take 2,030,000 2, days, but what did option 2 say, 10,737,000, Four hundred eighteen. So, Kaden, do you still want option one? No. Yes. Are you done? Oh, Two million versus ten million. Which one do you want? I want ten million, right? right? So, hold up. See, this is the question, right? This is why we need to learn our mathematics and understand it. Yeah. How do we get there, Tyler, Maddie? Pause on the table, Maddie, because I need you focus on this. Because you were looking at something instead of at what I'm talking about. Okay, right here. 
So how did they get there? First off, how many of us started trying to go by ones? Everybody, well, everybody did, for the most part. And that's fair, right? But was it easy to go to day 30 like this? No. no. So do we really want to go by ones all the time? Nope. No. No. Uh, does anyone still have ones up? Yeah, let's look over here really quickly. So I'm going to come back to this side. But I want us to notice this. When we looked at option one and we were looking at $60,000 a day, what is happening to get to the next day? To get to the next day, we're what? Well, I'm not two. Not option one. We were adding by 60000 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so a lot of us started to realize, hey, oh yeah, Mr. Kenny talked about this. Repeated addition is shown through what? Multiplication, isn't it? Yep. Repeated addition is shown through multiplication. So if I wanted to go to day five, jump straight there. How did I go straight to day five? Dodge, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. Come on, come on, close this way. Guys, I'm going to go to day five. How do I jump to day five? Oh, 60, oh, 60K times five. Right, plus 60,000 times five, because multiplication is repeated addition. addition. Okay, so if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to go straight to day 10, though. Right, day zero to day 10. How's that going to change things? I'm going to add 60,000 times 10, right? So what if I wanted to go straight to day 30? Okay, so I want y'all to look at this breakdown really quickly. So we started at 300,000. No matter what, we're starting at 300,000, right? Yeah. yeah. And then what are we doing? We're adding, adding 60,000, but then we did times five days, right? What? Right. Add 300,000 plus 60,000 times 10 days, right? Right. And then 300,000 plus 60,000 times 30 days. Notice that's an expression to make this work. Now I want you to look at that expression. Is anything changing? Yes, the, um, the, um, the money changed each day. I'm talking about these expressions. No, they're the same. The multiplication numbers are. The days are different. Okay, the days are different. Is that 300,000 there every time? Yes. yes. Is that 60,000 there every time? Yes, sir. But there's one thing that is changing. Hey, Brady, what do I use to represent something that is changing? You forgot? Yeah, the triangle thing. So, ah, that's good. Triangle the triangle, remember, helps us with the change in values. But guys, in mathematics, what represents something that can change or can vary? A variable. Uh, what? A variable, right? Oh. So, I'm glad you brought that up so there's connection there. But uh, notice, instead of 5, 10, or 30, what should I put there? D. Why, why D? Because the number of days. The number of days. Oh, man, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, so 60,000 times D. And now this could be nice and easy, right, if I looked at this for the exponential. But notice, if I just type 30 in, right, that's my input. I'm going to get, a for option one, a total of 2,100,000. That's that is kind of so much. Okay? And so if you can do that equation, could that have sped things up a whole lot? Yeah. Yeah, a whole lot, right? Um, let's see. So let's look over here. Okay? I don't think anyone, ah, we do have it here, right here, eyes and ears. Option two here, right? We got a table going. We're going by one day. Excuse me. And every day in option two, what is happening? What did we see? What the days? Duplicating. Duplicating? Come on, I need more mathematical language. It's right here. Okay, I need another word for that. Multiplying by two. Listen, doubling can work, but I need us to focus on the fact that we're multiplying by two. Because, Amber, how do we show repeated multiplication? Oh, an exponent. Remind me, J. Mike, what's an exponential function all about? Exponent. Oh, my goodness. So if we recognize that it's repeatedly multiplying, we know that we're going to use a what? Exponent. And what type of function is this going to be? Exponential. Exponential. And so I want us to notice, right, to go from 
day zero, which we should, this should actually be zero, one, two, three, four, day five is point three two. So to go from day zero to day five, we're multiplying by two how many times? Five times. We're multiplying by two. How do I show that I'm multiplying by two five times? Oh, what exponent? Two to the fifth. So we're starting at one cent and then multiplying by two to the fifth. What if I wanted to go to ten days, right? Notice Mel and her group went by ten days. What happened? Yeah, but how many times did they multiply by two? Well, you said ten days? Yeah. They did two to the tenth, so they went 0 0.01 times two to the tenth? Yeah. So what would happen if I, I don't know, wanted to go by 30 days? So 0 0.01 times 2 to the 30th? Yeah. That would make sense. It works. It works? So let's walk over. I'm going to walk over here. Excuse me, excuse me. This is the last thing before I need you all to take notes to your future forgetful selves and all those fun things right here. This group, they came up with an equation. Notice 300,000 for option 1. Because that's where they started, right? right yeah. And what happened in option one? They repeatedly added, added 60,000. And so, repeated addition. What came next, Cameron? For y'all? Multiplication, right? Repeated addition showed up in that multiplication. So, let's look down here. Notice, what did they start with in option two? 0 0.1. 0 0.01. That's the starting value, right? And then what happened? You're adding two each time. Say that one more time. You're adding two each time. Anyone push back on that? Wait, I didn't hear what she said. Repeated adding by two each time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Multiplying by two. Multiplying by two each time. Yeah. Right? So that's my rate of change. We're going to talk about that some more in a second. And then so where's that D coming from? It's coming from days, but why is it way up here? It's an exponent. Brady, exponents, they show repeated what? Repeated what? Exponents? Which one? Not sure? Demaya? Exponents show what? Say again, Demaya? I can't hear Demaya. I said an exponent shows what? So, Demaya, if I tell you 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, how could I rewrite that? Wait, why did you create an exponent? Because it's repeated what? Say it louder. You see adding right here? No. An exponent is repeated what? Multiplication. I know you know that, but we got to make sure we lock in. Brady, same deal. Right? Remember, guys, singular multiplication is repeated addition. But an exponent is my repeated multiplication. So why is that D in the exponent? Because we are repeatedly <coughs> multiplying by 2. So that exponent tells me repeated multiplication. Okay, so as a quick recap that all of us need to get into our notes in a second. What makes an exponential function exponential? We need to recognize an exponential function has repeated multiplication. So an exponential that is repeated multiplication. Now, uh, one thing I will point out is, let's actually build up that language. If something is happening the same over and over and over again, does anyone know a word that we use in math to indicate that it's the same? Repeated. It could be repeated. There's a C word, though. It is staying what? Constant. constant. We're consistent, but constant. And for this exponential, it's constantly what? Changing. Not just constantly changing. How is it constantly changing? By two. Only in this problem. But what did we just say? I'm talking about general. Exponentials are constantly what? 
multiplying. Yes, sir. It's not just a 2. 2 is in this problem. Okay. But when we say exponential, <laughs> when we say exponential, we're talking about constantly multiplying. multiplying. And so we call that a constant multiplicative. <laughs> multiplicative. <laughs> Rate of change. Whereas a linear, <laughs> did a linear have constant uh, multiplication? No. No, linear had constant what? Addition. So it was constant addition. So linear has a constant additive. Rate of change. And I need you to hear me very clearly on this. Okay? Eyes and ears here for a second. I'm going to give you a chance to do some notes to build up your understanding. Right. It is important for you to understand this because most teachers only talk about a... I'm trying to teach you so that you can learn and you're talking. Oh. You. I didn't even say anything. You want to just talk to Deanna? I didn't even say oh. nothing. <laughs> So, an exponential, sorry, most teachers only talk about linear as constant rates of change. But I need you to notice right here, right now, constant means it's the same over and over and over again. It's not constant addition, but is there a form of constant in this exponential function? It's just constant multiplicative. Okay, so constant multiplicative, constant additive. Go ahead and start getting some notes down about linear versus exponential. This would be a great piece to note on the tabular uh, stuff. All we have done so far is talk about the foundations of what makes linear versus exponential. Does anyone know what we call that constant additive rate of change, though? There's a name for this thing. Like, we can see the pattern, but mathematics is a language that describes things. So what is the name of that constant additive rate of change? Let me ask you this. What's the equation for a linear function? We looked at this earlier. Okay, what's the name of this equation? Slope intercept form. Because what are the two things involved? Slope and Okay. I want you to look at that equation. I need you to tell me this. Where do you see that constant additive rate of change in that equation? In the Something with that, because what's happening between the m and the x? Oh, yeah. Multiply. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because multiplication is repeated. So what's the name of a constant additive rate of change? It is repeated addition. That's not the name oh, of it. Oh, Look at that. You just said that mx, ah, there's a, but there's a name for the actual value in it. You said multiplication, right? But what are we multiplying by? Okay, there is an x there, but that's a variable. What's m? The slope. The slope. You know what the slope also is? No. Uh, constant additive rate of change is your slope. When you make a graph, and you go up 3 and you go to the right 2, aren't you adding 3 and then adding 2? Oh, so that's constantly what? Adding. Your slope, guys, is your constant additive rate of change. That's the name for it. That's the thing. And that's why, what are we doing with our slope in the equation? We are multiplying, because multiplication is repeated addition. That's how we got that equation, because multiplication is repeated addition. We need to recognize that and understand that. So slope, by the way, how do we calculate slope? M equals Y. M. Now, hold on. That y equals MX plus B. This is a common mistake. But that's my slope intercept form of line. How do I calculate slope? We talked about just rise, M earlier. Rise divided, by rise divided by run or the change in Y divided by the change in X. Okay. What's that B then? It's what? 
Just the B though. Which intercept? The Y intercept. Oh yeah, because it's the slope intercept. So B is the Y intercept. Anyone know how we identify the Y intercept? By looking at looking at what? The graph? But what if I have a table? I don't I didn't see a y intercept in that table, but why was thir th 300,000 the y intercept? Guys, do not forget this. this it's going to matter time and time again. A y intercept is when the input is zero. By the way, which variable is my input? Which variable is my input? X. So my y-intercept is when the input or the x is zero. Yeah. Okay? Can you finish up some notes with exponentials so we can practice on all this tomorrow? Dude. With that exponential up there. Exponential. Uh, does anyone remember what the equation for an exponential is? No, I love you don't. Don't, you don't remember? Okay, so let, let's look at this equation that uh, we have from the group of eights. What was this right here? This was the what? The starting value. Wasn't that a starting value? Yeah. Oh, that was also on day what? It was on day zero. Wait, so that's my y-intercept. That's my signing bonus and my y-intercept. So last time. So we call that A in the exponential equation times B, uh, not squared, because if it was squared, I'm only multiplying by B how many times? Two, Two times, but I want to multiply by B and multiply by B and multiply by B and multiply by B. Oh, hey, wait, 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 wait. wait. This, is, this is called a what? And so my variable is an... Because an exponent shows repeated what? Okay, repeated multiplication. We need to recognize that variable is an exponent for repeated multiplication. The most common mistake that students make is they do b squared, but b squared only indicates we multiply by b how many times? Twice. But I need a variable exponent. Now I'm sure. There's a name for this constant multiplicative rate of change, right? Yep. It is called a constant because it's happening over and over and over again, right? Factor. Guys, what do you do with factors? Multiply factors, right? So if you have a constant factor, that's what you're repeatedly multiplying by. Okay? So there's my equation. Tomorrow, we will pick up with looking at the graph and getting practice with this. But I will point out, a linear function looks like a what on a graph? Uh, a line. We have to look at what an exponential is on a graph, but then that's it for the introduction to linear and exponential. Okay.